Hey guys, in this lesson we're going to begin solving radical equations. Remember that a radical equation is any equation that contains a radical expression. Now to solve an equation like this, we're going to begin by isolating the radical sign to one side of the equation, getting everything else to the other side. Once we've done that, we're going to undo that radical sign by squaring both sides. Remember that the inverse of a square root is to square it. Once we've done that, we want to isolate the variable uh, or factor if necessary, and then set each of the factors equal to zero. And then we're going to solve the equation. Once we've done that, we want to check for extraneous solutions. Remember that an extraneous solution is simply any solution that you get when you solve the equation, but does not fit within the original problem. This is mainly when we are dealing with real world problems. All right, so let's get started. We're looking at A. Our first step is to isolate the radical sign to one side of the equation. As you can see here, the radical sign is already isolated and by itself. So we can move on to step two, which is to square both sides of the equation. So I'm going to square each side of the equation. So I'm going to square the square root of x, and I'm going to square 5. Now remember that a square undoes a square root, so once we square both sides, the radical sign is going to go away, and we're going to be left with what, with what, we're going to be left with what is on the inside, which is x and 5 squared, which is 25. And so when we solve this equation, we get x equals 25. Let's look at b. b is the same way. The radical sign is already isolated by itself, so we can move on to step 2, which is to square both sides of the equation. So I'm going to square the square root of 7x, and I'm going to square negative 7. Now the squared and the square root are going to undo each other, and so I'm just going to be left with 7x on the left. And on the right, we're going to end up with 49. Now that, I've, now that we've gotten to this part, we need to begin to isolate this variable. So I need to get x by itself. To do that, I'm going to divide both sides by 7, which would be the inverse of multiplication. And so we get our answer is x equals 7. All right, let's look at c. So on this one, you can see that the radical symbol is not by itself. We have this 2 on the outside. So we need to start by, we need to start by moving the 2. So in order to move this 2, because it's being multiplied to the radical symbol, we're going to divide it to undo that operation. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. Once I do that, I'm going to be left with the square root of 2b is equal to 4. Now that, the now that the radical sign is isolated, we're going to begin to square each side. So I square both sides of my equation. The radical sign and the squared cancel each other out, and so I'm left with 2b is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16 in this case. And then we divide both sides by 2 so that we can finish solving the equation for b. And so my answer for this one would be 8. Moving on to d, we have 4 square roots of x minus 5 is equal to 15. So before we begin solving this equation, we're going to have to, to uh, go through a couple steps here. We need to isolate that radical sign. So we're going to first begin by undoing the addition and subtraction that's happening. So because it's being subtracted by 5, I want to undo that operation first. We always get rid of addition and subtraction first when we're solving equations. Then we move on to multiplication and division. So when I add 5 to both sides, I'm left with 4 square roots of x is equal to 20. Now we need to get rid of that 4 that's outside the radical symbol. We're going to do that by dividing both sides by 4 since it's being multiplied. So once I divide both sides by 4, what I'm left with is the square root of x is equal to 5. Now that now the uh, radical is isolated and we can begin to finish solving this equation. We're going to square both sides of the equation here so that we can get rid of that square root. All right, The squared and the square root are going to undo each other. They're going to go away. 5 squared is 25, and so we can see that the solution to this equation is 25. Let's look at e. So e, we have 5 plus the square root of x equals 9. We're going to begin by subtracting 5 on both sides so that we can isolate that square root. So we get the square root of x is equal to 4. Now we're going to square both sides. The squared and the square root are going to undo each other, and that's going to leave me with x is equal to 16. Awesome. Let's look at the next equation. So here we have 2 plus um, the square root of 5x plus 1 equals 6. So we're going to begin by subtracting the 2 on both sides so that we can isolate that radical. 
And what we're left with is 5x plus 1, the square root of 5x plus 1, is equal to 4. Now that the radical is by itself, we're going to square both sides. The squared and the square root undo each other, so we're left with 5x plus 1 is equal to 16, since 4 squared is 16. Now we want to isolate the variable. So we'll subtract 1 on both sides. This will give me 5x is equal to 15, and then divide both sides by 5, like we would in any normal two-step equation, and x equals 3. And so here we have it. This is how we solve radical equations.